Uh, you know, I've uh, really enjoyed watching film this year. And the good thing is, is everybody has access to it. I think it costs you $99.99. So $99.99 if you want to get access like this through NFL.com. For me, it's, it's worth every cent because not only do you watch your favorite team, you can watch every other team. So like on Tuesdays, I'll watch the Bears and how they played on Sunday. And then on tomorrow, I'll watch their opponent play mm -hmm. at least one game, maybe two games. So you get a good feel for, for things. And I, I'll just read you what I sent you. I sent this to you guys. Good breakdown. Earlier today. I said, by the way, just got done with the All-22. Not one for hyperbole. But I'm not sure I've seen a more complete and impressive game from a Bears quarterback, at least not in a long, long time. The interception is a huge miss, but this dude makes throws only a few can make. Accurate, quick release, good decisions. Jags suck out loud, but this cat can sling it. He has full control of the offense, and he's playing with confidence. The O-line was solid, good enough. If they can play like that against better defenses, Caleb will continue to play big. Fun watch. And that's kind of how I felt about it. I'm sure you felt great about it when you watched it on Sunday. I'm mm -hmm. sure everybody did because there was so many really good plays that you could cling to. But when you watch it with the wide angle and then you see it from behind, I got to tell you, watching it the second time and from the angles that, that I had access to, yep, it was significantly better the second time around. That's awesome. To hear. Um, and... You know, the interception was, I mean, you heard him say, I mean, it, it stayed with him. He had a lot of remorse about it. He was 20, let me get his stats for you. He was 23 of 29, okay? Um, with the one interception. He threw 23 of 29 for 226, four touchdowns, one interception. He threw uh, his average yard per attempt was 7.8, so you're pushing it down the field. I've seen quarterbacks wearing Bears uniforms that have thrown for more yards. Sure. I'm sure that you could go through some of the stats and say, well, you know, Jay did this. Or remember the day that Mitch had five touchdown passes against Tampa. I'm telling you, and it's not hyperbole, because I've also been the same guy that will look at you and say, look, I do factor in the, the degree of difficulty. Mm -hmm. I do acknowledge that. You've played four of the five worst defenses in the National Football League so far. I do factor in that the teams you have beaten are four and eighteen, and the teams that you've lost to are five and one and three and three. I factor all that in, but I don't diminish. I don't necessarily diminish what I've seen because if they were winning twenty to sixteen the last two weeks, I would be less enthusiastic. They're drubbing teams. Yes. 36 points against the Carolina Panthers, 35 points against the Jacksonville Jags. I believe it's the first time they have had back-to-back -back games with five offensive touchdowns in how many decades? I believe it was 1957, if memory so, serves. So when you are, and I and I defined this, you know, before, like coming out of the Rams win, which I, you know, obviously I, you're thrilled to beat the Rams, but you still weren't there yet yeah. for me. I needed style points is how I described them. What I needed was the confirmation. And I said to you at the time, I think the team needed the confirmation, the offense in their offensive meeting rooms. They needed the confirmation that all that they've been doing is, is, is right, is good. And they're pointed in the right direction. I don't think necessarily got that in the Rams game, which is fine. I mean, this is a long road. Yep. Um, Caleb played a really clean mistake free game for the most part against the Rams. They missed some shots downfield. There was no vertical element to what they were doing, but he took care of the football and they won. Against Carolina Panthers, Caleb played a really clean game, and he added the vertical elements. Yeah. Threw for over 300 yards, averaged over 10 yards per pass attempt. Like, the vertical element was on display. This game, you saw the clean game because he had the one interception, but I'm telling you, yes. like, I couldn't find a really another play where, and again, I don't know exactly it, what is being asked of him, but I couldn't find another play where I would have, you know, emphatically said negative, the uh, check mark against that was a negative play again he threw he completed all but six of his passes one was intercepted the other five i would say at least two of them were throwaways mm -hmm. so like the ridiculous accuracy was noticeable slant routes why he would squeeze the ball in on third down to keenan allen the back shoulder throw in the, in the end zone even the fade like most quarterbacks can throw the fade route pretty well that one was perfect yes um 
You know, just well, his command of the offense. Um, and you know what? Can you walk us through and tell us about that throw, that touchdown pass to Keenan Allen, too? Well, because- uh, look, it's it's something that, that that's – you have to – I called it Rodgers to Adams. Mm-hmm. And ironically enough, they're yeah. back in the news today. But that's the kind of, of throw that you used to see Aaron Rodgers – make to Devontae Adams because you know based on what you're going to see that you're going to have to fit it into a really tight window between between defenders. You're going to have to trust that this veteran, you know, potentially Hall of Fame wide receiver is going to be exactly where he needs to be. You're going to throw it before he turns and you're going to have to trust that he's going to be able to get his hand in his head, his head in his hands around to make the catch. And if you watch it on film and you can see it from behind, the ball is out of Caleb's hands before Keenan turns around. There's only one place to put it. Mm -hmm. It's behind him and high with speed. Yep. Not above, way above his head, but you got to get it up and you got to make it fast and it's got to be on a line. It's got to be thrown away from the inside defender and it's got to be thrown fast enough so that the outside defender can't come in and close on it. Yep. It's, it's, it's poetry. It's football porn. Quarterback porn is what it is. And there's only a few guys in my humble opinion in the league that can make that throw consistently. I was thrilled with his command of the offense. I was thrilled with his accuracy. I was thrilled with 99% of what I saw. I do take into account the the degree of difficulty based on who the opponent is. That didn't diminish my appreciation for what I saw. Will it get tougher? No question. But he's playing now with confidence. And the other thing I was going to say, not only did he play clean in this game, not only did he then also add the vertical element, now you're seeing a wrinkle in his game. He ran for 56 yards. Yes. So he's not going to make you forget about Justin. I think Justin's one of the top five running runners of the football, regardless of position. Yes. Like his size, speed, speed combination. combination and ability to break tackles. He's unique. Yes. Caleb can't do that. But what Caleb can do is he can create time to throw the ball. And he does have enough athletic ability to tuck and run four times for 56 yards. And now you're seeing him play confidently where he knows yes. when to to create time to throw and when to to actually tuck and run with it he's playing with feel now he's playing with it just again i'm not one for hyperbole and i and i do take into account a lot of variables that's as clean and as impressive of a game as i've seen a bears quarterback play in a really long time and it and that's the reason why i come out of that game and i'm so excited about it um give credit where credit is due the offensive line as i wrote this down solid Maybe not spectacular, but capable. And if they continue to play like this as they step up in class, that will continue to allow Caleb to do some of the things he's doing. I thought the game plan was very good. It was very balanced. For the third consecutive week, they ran the ball. They stayed committed to running the ball. They ran it 29 times. If you factor in how many times they've run it over the last three weeks, they're averaging over 30 yards or 30 carries per game, which means they're staying dedicated to being a balanced attack. Um, the screen game has really found its rhythm. Not the wide receiver screens or the tight end screens. DeAndre Swift or Roshan Johnson coming out of the backfield. Yep. The, I mean, that takes time. It takes rhythm. It takes a lot of stuff. Um, it was all really, really good. Um, look, I, I, I watched the offense more than I watched the defense. The defense there, I, I will also say, like, it, you, they didn't, didn't look like the Jags were tremendously interested in the second half of that game, but that we... We were having the conversation that certainly could have been a spot where after the adrenaline wore off, the jet lag might have kicked in for the Jags. Which is fine. Yeah. You take advantage of what, you know, what you're facing. I'm just telling you, like, I did not see more than one or two physical mistakes, nor can I imagine he had more than one or two mental mistakes. And then Tyler told me that wasn't he the highest rated quarterback? By PFF this week. Yeah. I'm not shocked by that. Because when I came in and said to you guys, I don't think he made a mistake other than the, the the interception he threw, which was a glaring mistake. But everything else was spot on. Ball comes out of his hand 100 miles an hour. He doesn't throw fastballs when you're looking for change-ups or change-ups when you're looking for fastballs. He puts the appropriate speed, velocity on the ball. Some of the throws are, you know, fantastic. He's a, he's a, he's a gift for, for receivers as well because the last thing you want is a guy out there throwing you medicine balls. Yes. Slant routes hitting you in the numbers. I mean, it was really, really impressive. And then again, 
three weeks from now, we may look at each other and go, oh, we're in a valley now. It's not to, but for the moment here, I love the confidence he's playing with. I love the accuracy he's playing with. I love the poise and the command of the offense he's playing with. And it was a fun game to watch a second time for sure. That's very encouraging to hear. And I, you would agree, right? The most impressive game he's played all oh, year. By far. So by far, like I, I even said to you guys, as good as he played against Carolina, there were still moments in that game where you said to yourself, boy, he left a few throws out there, especially to DJ mm -hmm. in this game. Again, I, I can't I can't really go back and think of more than one play that the interception or maybe another one where I said, well, that's a miss or maybe he you know, didn't read this correctly. I bet you inside their building up there. Yes. They're beyond thrilled at how he graded out on stuff. And I, again, it comes with a dis the disclaimer for me. I don't know what he's being asked to do at all times. Sure. So I'm just assuming, using experience and, yes, you know, and whatever, having played trying the to, game, for... trying to predict what is happening. It's... Dude, the dude was was fantastic. On and Sunday. based on what you've over the years, you know, we've you've been doing this for uh, quite a while now for us. Usually, where you break down what you saw. I've never come in and told you guys what I told you about this game. You have, have not. I? No, you have I not. I usually you... come in and say, hey, here's the good stuff. I want to show you some things where yes. he can get better. This is, this is where this was a mistake. He needs to be better than this. And we went through a lot of that with, with Justin Fields. That's why it was easy to, you know, for anybody who was pushing back because of, to your point, like the great plays that Justin Fields is capable of, they're jaw-dropping. But the inconsistencies that were there for you when you break down the film, you know, every single yeah. play makes it hard to win in the NFL if you can't be more consistent on a, on a, down, a, a down in and down out basis. Look, look you, you, you know, I, again, I'm not leading the, 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 the parade to camp. Okay. No, yeah. I mean, like this is six, six games. games and this was one game where I'm effusive with what I'm telling you. Um, but you can see why people are juiced up about him. Yeah. How he reads the game, how he feels the game how he plays with confidence, the accuracy that he has throwing the football. And, and the more confident he gets, I think the even better that he'll be even better. But like, it's just, it, it, you could use some of the stuff that he did on like a quarterback teaching tape. Like this is how we want you to approach this setup. Mm -hmm. And like, that's where when you watch, you watched him play at USC, you were confident that, yeah. you know, this is inherent to who he is as a player. He plays with maturity. He plays with confidence. Um, he is tremendously driven to be the best that he can be. There's no laziness to his game mentally, physically, or how he approaches it. Um, yes. And again, you, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you and guarantee you he's a first-team All-Pro. He's an MVP, can't, any of that stuff. I'm just telling you that, and I'm pretty honest with you guys, that's the best quarterback film I've seen from a Bear maybe since... We that's, had access to the tape. That's some pretty high praise from a man who uh, I can co-sign what he said. He's not prone to hyperbole, so uh, pretty cool to hear that. But it was really cool to watch.